let's look at the E2 reaction of an alkyl bromide like this one. And I want to look at the E2 reaction using a base like T-butoxide, which is very sterically crowded. We know that for this type of reactant, there are two possible products because there are two sets of hydrogens that can be removed. We can remove a hydrogen from this carbon with the electrons flowing this way, the bromine leaving, giving us this product. Or we can remove a hydrogen from the other side, electrons flowing here, bromine leaving, giving us this product. Now we know that this product is the more stable product because there are more non-hydrogen substituents on the double bond. We have one, two, three, compared to only one in this product. And a lot of times it's the more stable or Zaitsev product that forms in these E2 reactions. However, with a sterically crowded base like T-butoxide, we get this less substituted product. And I want to look at why that is. And a lot of it has to do with the steric interactions in the transition state. So I want to look at the transition state for both of these reactions. Let's look at this reaction first. So here's my models. And this is not the transition state, but this is how my alkyl bromide and my base will line up. So there's my T-butoxide. You can see I've got my three methyl groups with my oxygen. This right here is this hydrogen that gets removed. I've got the two methyl groups right here and my bromine leaving group there. So this is how they line up. You can see that the oxygen is lined up right with the hydrogen it's going to remove and so on. Now if we look at the transition state, it looks something like this. You can see that the bond between the hydrogen and the carbon is starting to break. The, line, the, the bond between the hydrogen and the carbon is starting to break. The bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen is starting to form. If we wanted to, we could show these methyl groups starting to become planar. I also want you to note, and this is really important as well, that as this bond starts to break, the p orbital that's going to form my alkene starts to form again over here as this bond starts to break in my transition state, this p orbital starts to form. These two p orbitals will eventually form my pi bond. Now, what I really want to do is I want to rotate the molecule like this. Let me slide it up a little. And I want to look right down this bond right here. And what I hope this will remind you of is when we looked at Newman projections. I've got two atoms, in this case it's actually three atoms, and I've got six different things coming off of them. And if we draw this center as a Newman projection, it would look something like this. With the groups in front, my two methyl groups, this methyl group, this methyl group being these two methyl groups, and then the rest of my alkyl chain on the front carbon, and then the one, two, three methyl groups, one, two, and where is the third one up here? Three of my T-butoxide in the back. And what I hope you notice is that there's a lot of gauche interactions going on here. In fact, there are no hi simple hydrogens coming off of any position in my Newman projection. It's all an alkyl group, CH3, 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 bigger than a CH3, CH3. There's a lot of steric interaction, steric congestion there. Let's do the same thing for the transition state of our other possible product. So this is the transition state for my other product, the less substituted product. You can see again the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. This hydrogen right here and this oxygen is starting to form. The bond between the carbon and the hydrogen is starting to break. We're starting to form our p orbitals that are going to make up our alkene. If we do the same thing we did before and look at this like a Newman projection, um, let me slide it up a little bit, we get something like this where we can see our center with six different things coming off of it. And if we draw that as a Newman projection on the other side, we get something like this with the two hydrogens, these two or these two hydrogens on the front right here and here. One, two, three methyl groups from my T-butoxide. One, two, three. The rest of my carbon chain 
what you'll notice is there's much less congestion in this second case. We've got these hydrogens here, which make my Newman projection less sterically congested, lower in energy. So remember, this is the transition state. We've got a lower energy transition state in the second case, which makes the second reaction faster, which is why for a sterically congested base like t butoxide, we have a lower energy transition state when we take the less substitute the hydrogens to give us the less substituted alkene. And that's why this is the major product.